Okay, we're going to be making my rain gutter grow system. Making two of them with trellis. Now, I'm providing a sketch with the uh, materials on it. I will also include the dimensions. But here's one. This one has one 2 by 12 cut in half, two 2 by 10s cut in half, and two 2 by 4 by 8s cut in half. Now, two of them are just square on the end. But the other two, after you cut them in half, go ahead and put a 30 degree and 60 degree on each end. These are your back braces. Now right here is the downspout and it is cut in half. The other one is right over there for the other one that I'm putting together. Now first off we're going to do the base and I will show you that. Alright, this is our base. Now these are the five foot pieces where the that will hold the downspout and these are the two four foot pieces that are going to the base. Now on the base we're going to measure up two feet and strike a line across. Okay? Just like so. Now what this is going to be is the beginning of the first board. This one. Then we're going to move over four and a half inches, space in between them, and place the other board. The reason we're going four and a half inches is because the downspout's four inches and I have a cap on it and that's going to take up a little more space so we're going to give us some room. So here we go. Alright, these are the caps that I printed on my 3D printer. And that's why I'm not really giving you a set measurement in here, so whatever, if you have caps, they're going to vary from depending on where you get them from or if you make them, or if you just fold it, that's another thing. So we will show you both, we'll show you this one and I'll give you an example of folding, okay? So let me get this other one screwed in and we will move on to setting up the downspout. Now we're going to lay out the downspout for my net cups to come through on my rain gutter, down, uh, rain gutter uh, system. So our pipe is five foot long. So we're going to go two foot six inches, make a mark. Okay. Now the buckets we're putting on top at the widest point is 12 and 3 quarters, so let's go 13. Just give us a little bit of leeway. So 13, that's 6 and a half inches back, we make a mark here. That's 13 inches from there, we make another mark. And do the same on the other side. Now what we'll do is we're going to take a 3 inch hole saw. And what we do is we go forward until we get the drill bit through. Once we get the drill bit through, go slow. Because once you get the drill bit through, you want to put it in reverse. You don't want them teeth cutting in in the direction they're intended. This is very thin material and it will not take much to go through it. And if you go through too quick, you'll puncture the other side. We don't want that either. So, let me get the first one done and I'll show you. So, what we do is, we just kind of... Alright, now we did that, flip it in reverse, and we go backwards. Don't 
want it to go through and hit the bottom. As you see, pieces left on here. So that's our three inch hole for our neck cup to go through. Now let me finish these and we'll move on to the next step. All right, we got our four holes in for our four buckets or net pots coming from our buckets. So what we did was we went ahead and put silicone in it. All right, so what you do is you fill that groove with silicone, okay? And then once you put it on, push the silicone up into the cracks, okay? And then wipe off your excess, all right? Should have a good tight seal. Now, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Now that we got the downspouts sealed in on the ends, what we're going to do is I am going to use strapping pipe to pick this up to the level, okay? I realize it can be a half inch low and still work, but I call it nitpicky, but I'm going to pull it up to the level. And what I'm going to use is right here. This is a galvanized piping strap. You'll need some tin shears to cut it with. But I've been using this outside and I've got places I've used it 15 years ago and it's still holding strong. So, let me show you what we're going to do. Now to put a strap around the bottom and across the top, it's going to take 18 inches of strapping material. Okay, this is a 10 foot roll so I'll be able to do both mine with about a foot left over, okay? So, this is how I've got it bent, just so that one strap across the bottom and one on top. And let me show you how that looks. All right, so there it is, it's screwed in. It's not going anywhere. And we'll just cut it off right here. Now let me do one in the middle, one on the other end, and this bottom's done. All right, now let's start on the back. Here we see our pieces that are going across for the top and at the bottom, or should I say two feet up. And here are our uprights. All right, now two feet up from the bottom, okay, I put a line across. This is where this first one is going to go. And then four feet up from there is the end, and that'll be the top. All right, let's get started. All right, I've got one screw in each corner. I have just checked it with a square. And... I don't think I'm going to get it any better than that. So now I will put in the second screw in each corner. And I will lay out the holes for my lattice work on the back. And we will get back to you to show that. This is after the second run, okay? They are two runs of 25 foot each. And to keep them straight, here's the easiest way I figured out. The first two runs, you make everything going in one direction be on top, and everything going in another direction be on the bottom. Because your third one, which is your long one, is 50 footer, it will create a weave so you do the opposite and it ties everything together all right all right 
Now, after the third string, you have a complete netting up here. Now, if you'll notice, I don't have any cross bracing, and I don't need it with all this rope because the rope actually creates all the bracing. But if you did it right, you should have your perfect alternating weave, okay? Up, down, up, down, and so on. Now, it's actually quite tight, so it should work fine. Let's move on to the next step. Now here we're going to screw the back, or the lattice part, to the base before we put the braces on. And this is the finished product. You have a rain gutter system at the bottom with a built-in trellis at the back, capable of high winds, and if there's any doubt you could always put sandbags on the bottom to keep it stable. But I'd like to thank you all. Please subscribe and if you have any questions feel free to ask.